welcome to row one series on medical biology today we are going to be talking about the structure of a dna now when you look at the nucleus of a cell we have two types of nucleic acids two types of nucleic acid we have dna and rna dna stands for deoxyribonucleic acid whilst RNA stands for ribonucleic acid but today we are going to be dealing with DNA now DNA contains or stores the genetic information of a cell this genetic information are passed down from parent to their offspring now majority of the DNA molecule is found in the nucleus of a cell so we term that as nuclear DNA whilst very few of them is found in the mitochondrial and that's what we call it the mitochondrial DNA you must also know that DNA is also a linear polymer that consists of nucleotides and a typical nucleotide consists of three components we have the nitrogenous base the phosphate the phosphate group, then we have the pentose sugar. In terms of DNA, we call it deoxyribose sugar. And in terms of RNA, we will call it just ribose sugar. Again, the nitrogenous base consists of four things. We have the adenine, guanine, cytosine, and thymine. Now, adenine and guanine together, we call it purine. While cytosine and thymine together we call it pyrimidine. Now these nitrogenous bases must pair up together, and that brings me to what we call the complementary base pairs. You must also know that DNA structure is a double-stranded molecule. It is a double-stranded molecule. However, there are some viral DNA that are not double-stranded they are actually single-stranded talking about the complementary base pair again you must take note that adenine must always pair up with thymine whilst guanine pairs up with cytosine now the bond that is occurring between the nitrogenous base we call it hydrogen bond and we have two hydrogen bonds between the adenine and the thymine and then three hydrogen bonds between the guanine and the cytosine that means by virtue of stability guanine cytosine is more stable than adenine and the thymine complementary pair a DNA is always read in the 5' prime to 3' prime direction and it moves in the opposite direction meaning when one strand is moving that way the other strand must move in the opposite direction and that's what we call the anti-parallel pair of a DNA molecule now this here is a nucleotide and it consists of nit nitrogenous base the sugar group and the phosphate group and it is connected to the other pair on the other side by the same thing and the bond is called hydrogen bond again one nucleotide here must also pair up with the other nucleotide because you say dna consists of what nucleotide that means they might be joined together the joining of this and that the bond between them is called the phosphodiester bond phosphodiester bond so take note and this bond is really really strong compared to the hydrogen bond so that means it takes a great deal of energy to break the bonds here than to break the bonds between the nitrogenous bases and again we can have some nucleases or some enzymes that can actually break these bonds now when we take a nucleus nucleus simply means the enzyme that break the phosphodiester bond and then we have exonuclease and endonuclease that means if the breaking point or if where the bond has to be broken is 
at the ends, we call it exonucleus. And if the bond has to be broken within, we call it endonucleus. And again, if it is with respect to DNA, we call it DNA. If it is with respect to RNA, we call it RNA. As simple as that. Don't forget, don't forget that there are three forms of DNA. We have the A form, the B, and then the C. The A form is very short, has the widest di diameter with right handed twist, and also has 11 helical turns. The B form is long, even size diameter, right handed twist, but with 10 helical turns. Whilst the Z form is longer, thinner, and has the smallest diameter, but it is left-handed twist with 12 helical turns. Now, the most used form of the DNA is the B form. The B form. So, when we are talking about DNA, we are mostly referring to the B form. There are some few things I would like to throw your mind on. We have the melting, we have what we call the melting or denaturation point, then we have the melting temperature. Now, the melting or denaturation point is simply the point at which DNA molecule denatures. Whilst melting temperature is the temperature at which half of DNA molecule denatures. As easy as that. Now, we can tell the technologies here, we have what we call nucleoside, and then nucleotide. Now, a nucleoside consists of two parts. We have the nitrogenous base and we have the sugar group. Sugar group. Example, if it is in terms of adenine, we call it adenosine. If it is in terms of guanine, guanosine, and so on and so forth. Now, nucleoside like this, we have nitrogenous base, sugar, and the phosphate group together. That gives you a nucleotide, a nucleotide. An example, now, when you take, when you take a typical nucleotide like this, a typical nucleotide like this. Now, if we have nitrogenous base, we have the sugar group, and then we have the phosphate group. Now, if this phosphate, if it is just one, if it is just one, we call it thymidine monophosphate. Now, if this phosphate, if there are two, German phosphate, we call it what? By, by phosphate. So, tanidine by phosphate. If it is three, try phosphate. And so on and so forth. And so on and so forth. So, just be able to differentiate between these things. And I think we are done when it comes to the structure of DNA. And again, don't forget, DNA is, so a nucleotide, is the basic structural and functional unit of a DNA molecule. The first, the pentose sugar group, pentose sugar group and then the phosphate group together, they form the backbone of a DNA structure they form the backbone of a dna structure so basically this is it when it comes to dna structure